cutest little baby kangaroo. Hang, Hang on, on for, for the loop. Three, two, one. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. Ricky, it's December. Oh, it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's the season of peace and presents. The season of good cheer, cookies, and otters. Otters. OK. We'll get to that, but first, before we get distracted by all the hustle and bustle of the season, we have postcards. Yes, we asked you what you wanted to hear about here on The Loop Show, and a lot of you asked the same question. Who is God? This is a question that people have been asking since the beginning of time. So let's start with the big picture. Welcome, I'm Professor Benjamin Monroe, but my friends call me Professor Lexicon. <laughs> I'm an entomologist, which means I love to study words. <laughs> the fascinating thing about words is that, what is this? Uh, it's for your sidekick. What's up, pizza slices? It's your boy, Ed, AKA Scooch. Shout out to my homies at Dig Big Words. What is this? They thought you needed a hip young sidekick. Yeah, cause words can get crunchy. So I'm gonna take your glitter and make it shine, man. Well, as I was saying, Ed. Call me Scooch. I'm not doing that. Today we'll be discussing the omnis. Like omnivores? And that's a dino that eats absolutely everything, bruh. Plants, hamburgers, rubber tires, etc. The root word omni is a Latin term meaning all. Take the word omnipresent. This is a compound word of two Latin words, omni and praisings. It means all the presents, like I got everything on my Christmas list. No, it means all here or always here, close to everything. The word omnipresent is a word used to describe something that is unlimited with respect to space. Whoa. Take the word omnipotence. Okay, I will. This is a compound word translated as all power. The word omnipotence is used to describe something that is unlimited in power that never gets exhausted. I think my friend Dil Dylan has that. Which brings us to my favorite omni, omniscience, which means all knowledge. The word is used to describe something that is infinite in knowledge of all things inside and outside of time. Take it from me. Don't mess around with being outside of time. time. These three words, omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient, are words most often used to describe God. God is unlimited in size, infinite in power, and all knowledge. That's awesome. Awesome. That's a perfect word to describe it. You know, the original meaning of the word awesome is an overwhelming feeling of reverence and admiration or fear. We've reduced it to a slang term, meaning impressive. But when we truly think about how God is omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient, we can fully stand in awe. It is awesome. Tuts. Words are dazzling. Use them with care. Yeah, bro, words are like the best. God is bigger than words. Yeah, it can be difficult to kind of describe the creator of everything. From gigantic galaxies. Eeny, bee, specks of dust. From a mighty whale. To the adorable sloth. Everybody, this is our friend Melissa with the sloth. Hi. <sighs> this is Sid, and Sid <gasps> is a two-toed sloth. Here you go, Sid. Oh, there you go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, now, shoot. we're going to let you see how Sid eats. He actually uses his hands similar to the way that we use our hands. God created everything. If all cats looked the same, if all animals looked the same, it would be kind of boring, right? You've seen one, you've seen them all. Mm -hmm. But God made everything very different for us so that we could enjoy looking at them, interacting with them, having fun with them, and just being amazed by them. Oh, this wow. Amazing. Oh, he's so sweet. Oh, his little crunching noises are so mm -hmm. cute. Sloths in the wild will grow algae all over their body. Mm -hmm. And so they literally look like they're part of the tree. That is the only defense that they have, because as we all know, sloths are very slow. Mm -hmm. Another really cool fact about sloths, they sleep about anywhere from 15 to 18 hours 
a day. Wow, we have so much in common. I just thought that he slept that much because he couldn't handle all of his adorableness. You just <laughs> yeah. have to sleep that much when you're this cute. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, Hi. I like how he checked you out. He went into your lap and then looked at you, made sure everything was okay. Uh, hi. They are not social with other sloths or other mm -hmm. animals, but with people, they like to hold on to us. We're warm, Aww. we feel good, they like to cuddle Aww. and fall asleep. We're gonna keep on hanging out with Sid the Sloth and having just the best time of our life. Let's go to Leslie. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Let's take a closer look at these words that you've probably heard before. I mean, it's basically the most quoted verse of the Bible. See, in one short verse, this is what we learn, how God loves us and how we can respond. God loves by giving, and we get to accept what He gives. We get to believe. Also, in another book of the Bible, 1 John, it says that God is love. So for this is how love loved the world, that love gave his one and only son. Yeah, I know. It's so deep that I can't even wrap my mind around it. But God is love. So much love. This verse tells us how he demonstrated that love. How? Yes, by giving, but not just giving any old thing. He allowed his son Jesus to die. He loved us so much that he let that happen. God let Jesus die for us. These words are describing the plan that God had to rescue us from our sin. See, some translations say everlasting life, but at the end of it, it's all simply just the grandest invitation to us for us to engage in a new life. It's an invitation and you get to RSVP. You get to let God know if you're coming to the everlasting party or not. Christmas sleigh bells. In the popular Christmas song, O Come All Ye Faithful, in one stanza, how many times do you sing the words, O Come Let Us Adore Him? Is it A, two times, B, three times, C, four times, or D, never? Well, let's test it out and see. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, for the King of angels. O come, let us adore him, O come, let us adore him, O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. It's B, three times. When I think about who God is, it blows my mind. I can't even conceive, I don't have the words. I'm typically someone who has a lot of words and I don't have the words to describe how much I adore him. Even that word seems too small. Adoration, it just seems seems like it's too tiny. It means intense love and respect. And what this song is saying is, let's take a break during the Christmas season and adore him for being such a big God. But let's not just stop with the Christmas season. Let's go all year long. Oh, come let us adore him all year long for being the incredible creator who made us and everything else. He loves us, all knowing, all powerful, all present, and all loving. Oh God, we adore you for being bigger than words. Goodness, he was just making like a little barking noise or something. <laughs> that is called a chatter. That's kind of the way they talk with each other. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's like their own little social media. It is. I love it. This is Aussie. Oh, I thought his name was Joey. <laughs> oh. Well, technically he is a Joey. That is what all baby kangaroos are called oh. when they're in the pouch. So even if they're a boy or a girl, they're still called a joey? Yes, they are. Oh. Does he have a pouch? His mommy has a pouch that he goes into. Wow. They start out the size of a bumblebee, and then they crawl up, find mommy's pouch, and go to the bottom, and for four months, all they do is drink milk and grow. Like a big bumblebee? Like a tiny bumblebee. Oh my goodness. Uh, Aussie will be about six feet tall when he stands up big. Six wow. Six feet, can he play sports? Mm -hmm. sorts? They are able to hold all of their weight on their tail and use those bottom really, really large feet to kick with. Oh wow. wow. What do kangaroos eat? Grass, leaves, um, any type of veggies oh, you that my... they could find. I think he thinks my sweater is grass. He eats all day long. Oh, he is okay. a grazer. Animals didn't just happen to be like they are. This guy coming from Australia, it is an island. It is surrounded by salt water. God designed him to be able to drink salt water if he needs to instead of fresh water. Australia has a lot of droughts. There's not always a lot of water to drink. Now my other friend who will swim in salt water is not designed to actually drink it. Ooh, Are I'm you so ready excited. to see the next one? Yes. yes. All right. Uri, 
is a small clawed Asian otter. Hi. She does not live in the sea like sea otters do. She lives on the land. She does go swimming in the water, just like we enjoy swimming in the water. She does too. Oh, see, oh, wow. I, I thought that they lived in the water, but they just go recreationally. Yes. That's fun. And to look for food. Oh. So I've heard that otters will hold hands. Oh, they will. When they're floating on their back, is that so they don't lose each other? It is, oh. So because they will sleep while they're floating. Yeah. And will they only do that with, like, their significant otter? <laughs> <laughs> they do tend to break off into pairs, you know, just okay. kind of like we do. And they raise families together, so you have an extended oh. family. You'll have a mom and dad. The brothers and sisters will help take care of the new babies. You'll oh. notice God gave them these little hands that are extremely flexible and mm -hmm. nimble. Uh, in the wild, they will eat mollusks and clams, things that they have to break open. It, oh what? Gosh. Without even watching like a YouTube mm -hmm. tutorial, they can just <laughs> do it. How old is um, Dory? Dory is just two years old. So she is kind of like the teenager stage right now. Oh. Do teenage otters get acne as well? They don't get acne, they get an attitude. Oh. <laughs> Just think about all the time God put into designing these animals. I think it's so great that God created these animals and they are so intricate and so unique and they're designed to live in all these different places and all these different elements. And if God spent this much time on the animals, like how much more time do you spend on us? Who, you know, the Bible says that we were created in his image. And I love the fact that he created these animals for us to love on them and take care of them and cuddle with them. <laughs> God loves the world that he created. God loves everything in it. He loves candy. He loves bright lights. He loves singing. Da, da, da. Not my thing. He really, really loves animals. All of them. His favorite thing that he created is you. Trust God to give you breath. Trust that he's there listening to hear you laugh. Trust that he's there to wipe your tears, that he sees you and he understands you even when you don't have the words. The God of the universe, he brought the extraterrestrial into the Christmas story. He gave a bright shining star because he knew his followers would need a creative way to find his gift. The God of the universe, he knows the whole entire thing and he knows the whole you and he has a plan to show you love like you can't even describe because God is bigger than words. High five. <gasps> Sweet. She did it. <laughs> uh, I can get dizzy thinking about how the creator of the universe knows little of me here on Earth. It's crazy to think that the same God that created these incredible animals also created us. He not only knows us, but he loves us. So who is God? God is bigger than words. Isn't that right? Oh, come let us adore him. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. Good job, Melissa. Thank you. The God of the universe who created everything from the stars to animals also created you. And he loves you. And he wants a relationship with you. And what's crazy to think about is that when we choose to say yes to God, we choose to trust in him, incredible things happen in our lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that out of all of creation, when asked what your favorite thing is, you respond with us. That you call us your masterpiece. That you see us, you know us and you love us. What's obvious though today is that there are some of us who maybe don't even realize how special God has made us. We don't even realize how much God loves us. Maybe you don't realize how much God loves you. Hopefully today though, you're starting to have something stirring inside of you that's opening up your mind and your eyes and your heart to the possibility that you were created for a relationship with God. And that even though there are things in our lives that just might not be good things, God makes a way for us to move past those into a relationship with Him. The way that He did that was by sending His Son Jesus to die for you and for me so that we could be forgiven of our sins and that we could be made right with God to have a relationship with him. The God of the universe wants a relationship with you so badly that he sent his son Jesus for you.
And what the Bible tells us is that anybody who says yes to Jesus will be made new and will be made right with God. And maybe today you're realizing that that's what you've been missing this whole time. And today you want that to change. You wanna say yes to Jesus and to become one of his followers. If that's you, then simply lift your hand right now. All over the place, if you wanna say yes to Jesus, just lift your hand up so that we can pray with you and for you. If you just made that choice, repeat after me, dear Jesus, forgive me. I'm turning from my sin. I'm turning toward you. I need your love. I need your grace and I need your mercy. I give you my life in Jesus name. Amen. We are so proud of you. For those of you that made the best choice you could ever make to say yes to Jesus, please know that you are loved by God. And we want to help you better understand what it looks like to follow Jesus. So before you leave, talk to your small group leader, talk to somebody and let them know that you said yes to Jesus.